Good day, guys. Hello. We made it to Isa. We did make it to Isa. G'day guys. Hello. We made it to Isa. We did make it to Isa. No incidents. Good drive. Yeah, really good drive after the truck. So we are going in today to the Mount Isa Info Center, which is also the Outback at Isa. I was just reading it. Uh, apparently it's like a big info thing about the history of the area and there's a cool underground mine and stuff that you can go in and see, like set up and things. Um, so yeah, we're yeah. gonna go check it out and hopefully it's pretty cool. Sort of double-edged sword because we also want to check out what there is to do around, which is one of the things we always do and we highly recommend. Pop into an info center, whatever yeah. town you're in or whatever sort of district. And because we're going to try and plan how to head to Alice from here as well. There's yeah. a few different ways. Ask them about some road conditions and everything, which is what information centres are all there for. Yeah, so generally the first thing we do when we get to a place is hit up the info centre. So. It's good when they combine it with something to do as well. Yeah, it's pretty good. There's, there's been a few of them. Yeah, there's been a couple like that. So yeah, Gambia we'll take you through. One. Yeah, Gambia was good. All, all right. right, guys. Mining. Or four. I don't know, I can't read it. Celebrating 75 years of mining. So in case you haven't figured it out by now or you don't know, Mount Isa is a massive mining town. There is a huge mine right in the middle of Mount Isa. Um, <laughs> Um, and my best friend's fiance actually works in the mine. So, yeah, it's what you do in Mount Isa. You don't have any friends? No, apparently I don't have any friends. This ragged flat where the earth crumbled in poisonous dust and the very grass had the menace of spears. Some, that sums up Mount Isa. <laughs> Calcadoon stone axe. It's a good little saying. It's an all sample. Isn't that crazy? Cowbell was used to signal the start and knock off times in the printing room. 
of the Konkari Advocate. Here we go. From start to finish. Whoa. We've got blasting, mucking, crushing, hoisting, grinding, flotation, concentration, smelting, shipping. That's it. All right, we're heading outside. Outback Park entrance. Graceful. All right, switching to full drive mode, Blake. Switching to sun protection mode, more like it. They are, they're cool. I'm gonna be in the back of your photo. That's where. Anything purple. My wife thinks it's cool. Somebody is into like native trees and stuff. Probably really like it out here. I don't know the difference. I like native stuff. Doesn't mean I can tell the difference. Ooh, oh, we're going up. Oh, oh, we're losing it. No, we're not. Let's fish! Fishy, fishy, fishy! It is! Oh, nice! That's cool! If you're not familiar, we are currently in Kalkadoon country. Ooh. This is so beautiful. Oh, we're bogged. Sorry about the wind, the wind's just picked up. It is. Waterfall's cool. There you go, that's what Riz was talking about. I'll put some shade on it so maybe you can see it. Common name, Snappy Gum. Kalkadoon name, Booty. Probably pronouncing that very wrong. Alright, that's enough. You want to see more, you got to come to yourself. Guys in the same area. That's all right. <laughs> and down we go. How? Nobody's ever like, oh, awesome, you're taking the shortcut. Everybody's always like, you're doing it the hard way. There is. Oh, this is cool. Wow. Mount Isa Mines Limited is one of the world's leading producers of lead, silver, copper, and zinc. The story of this mine, this company, this city began with just one man. His name was John Campbell Miles. Miles had been a prospector on and off all his working life, 
and in February 1923, he was passing through the... And then the snacks. Goats! <laughs> The dry northwest was unable to support dairy cows, depending heavily on the much hardier goats. Nanny's, nanny's milk. Nourished out by children and was whipped into butter cream. Young goats were excellent. Made excellent eating, as good as lamb any day. And their hide sold for six shillings a skin. We didn't want in the pram anymore. Uh. Uh. But now we're out. Two community. Mine side, downside. Still kind of feels like that in the town. That the miners and then not the miners. Oh, come back away from the noise. So apart from the um, mine, the other thing Mount Isa is famous for, rodeos. Come check this out. Fossil Center. Oh, this is cool. Hey. Sorry, I yelled before. Smells new, hey? Ooh. Epoch time. Oligocene. 33.9 to 23 million years ago. Questions about our animals, such as why do koalas lack tails? Why does the mountain pygmy possum live only in alpine regions of southeastern Australia? And is the platypus as secure in its environment as the brush tail possum is in its? 
require information that simply cannot be provided from the study of living animals or their environments alone. Paleontology, the study of ancient creatures, can provide a more accurate vision of life's parade through time. There is no other site like it in the world. It documents the changes in our animals in one region from about 30 million years ago to about 30,000 years ago. No other site on the planet has done that, and it shows us not only our strange extinct extinct group of animals but also the origins of our modern fauna because of this i look at our modern fauna with an understanding of their uniqueness where they have come from and how long they have been here and it is they which make australia australia <laughs> no there was such a big fossil presence in that one 280 dig sites of new ones every year, 35 kilometers squared plus sites not excavated, more than 230 named fauna species. That's cool. What are all these different species that have been found here? Will the revelations of Riversley ever come to an end? My bet is there are lots more to come and that the next 25 years of research into the resources of these World Heritage Sister fossil deposits will add far more to Riversley's already extraordinary story. So David Attenborough, the mayor, recovering the past. Fracturing Riversley's hard limestone exposes embedded specimens. Selected areas are drilled and sometimes light explosives used to break rocks into manageable blocks. Exposed fossils are consolidated with glues and resins to protect them during transport. Helicopters occasionally move them from remote areas and trucks then transport the limestone blocks to laboratories. After arrival, the blocks are submerged in acetic acid baths. The acid dissolves the limestone, releasing the fossils for study and display. Oh wow. Lungfish tooth plate, bat ear bones, bat canines, bat lower jaw, bat upper jaw, bat upper molars, bat lower molars, bat premolars, bat jaws, bat incisors, bandicoot molars, marsupial molars, kangaroo teeth, dasyurid molar, lizard jaw fragments, frog maxilla fragments, small mammal incisors, maleodectal dectid jaw, diprotodon tooth, kangaroo tailbone, fish barbs, and snake vertebra. Holy dooly, that was all from one bit of limestone. That's insane. Riversley World Heritage Area is 250 kilometers northwest of Mount Isa. It extends across 10,000 hectares and sits within the Bujamala National Park. Riversley was once scattered with lush forests freshwater pools. Water's rich and dissolved limestone created perfect conditions for preserving bones and fossils. This geological process continues today with Riversley's Rivers Lee's limestone containing fossils spanning the last 30 million years. Riversley's fossils have trebled the known number of extinct mammals from the whole Australian continent. Wow, that's cool. In 1994, Riversley was added to the World Heritage List of Properties along with Narra Court in South Australia. Been there. So all of these are in this one block of limestone. The lighting isn't that great. But that's really cool. So if we have a look at number one here, that one, it's a kangaroo bone. That's really cool. You can see the other little bones. They're all fossilized. Look how tiny they are. That's a kangaroo rib, apparently. Cool. Or snakes. Snake vertebra and ribs. Vertebra. Wow. Oh, wow, look at this one. Yolonga Camphildenesis. Vertebrae and ribs. 
giant narrow mouth snakes are the largest snakes found in the Riversley fossil deposits. They could exceed six meters in length with a girth of a dinner plate. Wow. Yolongo is derived from the Yolngu, named for the rainbow serpent. That's cool. Snake vertebrae. Oh, wow. Look at that. That's snake vertebrae and ribs. That's cool. So that is a skull of an extinct platypus had functional teeth and was larger than its modern relative. The presence of teeth in this ancient platypus suggests it may have eaten harder prey species and was less of a bottom feeder than the modern platypus. Possums? Partial skull and jaw, been like marsupial woodpeckers. Partial skull and jaw fragments from a bandicoot. This is a rem remains of an ancient koala. So that's a partial skull. These were killer kangaroos. So a Caldata ema skull and jaw fragments. The teeth indicate it was probably able to slice through bone and muscle. That's terrifying. This big boy. <laughs> was a marsupial lion. Was present in Australia from at least 24 million years ago up to about 30,000 years ago. Six species have been recovered at Riversley, including three from the Waka Leo genus. So you can see there's a partial draw of the Waka Leo genus there. It's crazy. Barus cleaver headed crocodiles could grow up to five meters long and were top predators of the late Oligocene to late Miocene. All of them are part of the Mycosuchine subfamily, many members of which were at least partially terrestrial, hunting in the forests rather than just in the water. The first virus specimen found at Riversley had the partial skull of a marsupial lion in its lower jaw. Wow. Bairu comes from the name of the saltwater crocodile in the Yolngu language of the Arnhem Land. Wow, look at that. That's crazy. It's a modern crocodile skull. Did you read that? That one of the fossilized crocodiles had the skull of one of the marsupial lions in its jaws? That's cool. Snapping turtles. The largest marsupials were diprotodontids, herbivores ranging from the size of a sheep to a rhinoceros, with some weighing up to 2,700 kilos. From the Oligocene, a variety of diprotodontid species roamed Riversley until they became extinct throughout Australia and New Guinea by about 20,000 years ago. Their closest living relatives are the wombats. Did you hear that? 20,000 years ago, we have Aboriginal art paintings and history that we know from between 60 and 40,000 years ago. There were Aboriginals walking around with rhino-sized wombats. And Look those, at the footprints. Yeah. And, and those giant terrifying marsupial, marsupial lions, lions and meat-eating kangaroos. <laughs> oh yeah, they would have had some fun back then. That's a terrifying thought, hey. And just, you haven't seen them yet. But just a quick glimpse at the four meter tall demon ducks. <laughs> oh my god. Four meter tall flightless birds. We think the cassowary is scary. If the cassowary was another two meters tall, then it would be scary. That's insane. Kudos to Indigenous Australians for living well, with terrifying peop well, pe people. Surviving. Terrifying well, things like this. Yeah. Like, look at the size of these bones. 
its head did. This was a specimen recovered from Floraville Station near Burktown in northwestern Queensland in 2011. Hank is 400,000 years old and today is the most complete specimen of, specimen of this giant marsupial found in Queensland. I can't talk today, but that's crazy. Wow, look at the size of its lower jaw. Holy. Let's go have a look. Let's go have a look at the bats and the waving lake. Ooh, cave of wonders. Holy jeebus. That is terrifying. What is that? Is that the giant bandicoot we were looking at before? Some of the enigmatic animals of 30,000 years ago. Pelopistus was a large marsupial that probably used its huge claws and trunk like snout to feed on the leaves and twigs of trees. And Palamnarchus was a large freshwater crocodile not closely related to modern Australian crocodiles. Is there a, oh yeah, there's the crocodile. Can you see him down there? Wow. What is this one? Oh, we saw these in Narraport. Rhizo, Rhizocenurus flaneuri. <laughs> it's probably saying he's really wrong, but it's fun to try. Short-faced kangaroo lived in rivers, leaf forests in the late middle Miocene around 12 million years ago. Wow. So this one is injured in it's being depicted as being chased down by a wakaleo, which is one of those giant terrifying um, lions. And then, oh, oh yeah, there's the Wakaleo. There he is. There's the Wakaleo, and he's chased his prey down into the cave. Oh, bats! Look at the bats. A trident bat. Both of these insectivorous species are common prey of a much larger ghost bat. Their remains have been found in the floors of ancient cave sites. The sheath-tailed trident and ghost bats all have modern day relatives in the Riversley area. Oh, and then there's all the big ones, the big bats. There they are. Ghost bats and Lagania, the tight oh, that's incredible. Ghost bats live in Riversley forest, caves, preying on other small animals. Today they are the only carnivorous Australian bat species and have a patchy distribution. Onwards we go. Ooh. Wow, this is cool. It's a bit prettier than the one at Narracourt. <laughs> Miocene Medley. The scene represents Riversley in the middle of my in the middle Miocene epoch. Previous plants, pools of water, and warm climate supported a multitude of creatures. Explore the diversity of species thriving in this rich and lush rainforest. Lush rainforest. Lush. Let's get a little snakey do. Apparently, there's frogs. Well, there's a waka leo. The terrifying marsupial lion. There's a diprodontid or a diprotodon. Oh, it is a little baby. So cute. Uh, thylacinids. There's thylacine, the Tasmanian tiger. Number of different species of thylacinid inhabited the Riversley area. They were very similar in appearance to the Tasmanian tiger, although much smaller in size. So there you go. It's the same species. Cool. It's actually really cool. Research turtles down there. Barra Wartornis Tediford. This was one of the Dromonophids, a large flightless bird. So this one was that big limestone block that you saw before. Mad Madtisoid. That's hard to say. Uh, a quoll species of Dacirus collectively called quolls or carnivorous marsupials. So where's the quoll? 
really hard to film and have a fan. Oh, there's the coal. See the coal there? Little coal. And then the platypus, the ancient platypus that we saw the skulls for as well. There's a koala somewhere apparently. Can't see the koala. Where's the koala? There's the koala. He was hiding on the other side of the tree. The Lita koala. There you go. Hey guys, we are here at what was it called? Parkside Playway Park. Apparently there are lots of little parks around town that have really random names like that. This is just one of them. So we're here with Jade, my best friend. Hello. And her two boys, Asher and Flynn, in the background there. It's pretty cool. I'll take you over and show you the swing. <laughs> Are you see soaring by yourself? Are you going to go down the slide? Are you going to go down the slide? Come on!
I feel great that I've done that. Um, that I could not have done that by myself without someone seeing it. You've done better than I do because I don't even like four driving with Laurie next to me, so. Uh, I'm so proud of you. If you can hear me, this DJI is not going to do this justice. None of our cameras are going to do this justice. But this is absolutely gorgeous. Stunning! It's lost and it's stunning. Not lost. Do a good job. Yeah. You still feel like you have heat control. You still get drive out of your front wheels. How do you feel? Way better than going up. Are you cracking your pants? No, not like I was going up. That's good. It was way better. <laughs> way better. Down is always easy. Gravity yeah. helps you. Yeah, it's still scary though. Yeah. I'm so <laughs> proud that I did it. You should be. It's awesome. And you got a did you scrape on that mount? No, not coming. Yeah, because we came on that angle. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, so good. All right. Let's go. Oh. Animals. Look at them. Yeah. Oh, look at that. Look at that. So what do you reckon they're using for, Jay? The bully and camel races. Oh, there you go. So they go out there and do the races and then get brought back here for the rest of the year. That's pretty cool. Jump, jump, jump. And there's like a really dark one out there. I'm trying to zoom in. Look at him. So 